Militant Islam appears to be spreading its influence to more and more European towns and cities. Here in Brussels, a Muslim woman journalist, using her veil as a disguise, infiltrated the Muslim community and found so many radicalized young people, men and women, ready to use violence in their cause. Well, the book the journalist Hind Frye has written, which is called Undercover in Little Morocco, has shocked Belgium to the core. We went out to some of the same areas to take a look for ourselves. This is Hind Fraihi, a 30-year-old journalist. Her parents come from Morocco, but she considers herself a Belgian through and through. She was born and raised in a small Flemish town, where she also went to school and had her first job. Hind speaks fluent Arabic and has written much about the lives of Muslims in what is called the Dar al-Harb, the non-Islamic world. Her recent book about the rise of Muslim extremism in Belgium has attracted a great deal of attention. Her theory is that young Muslims of both sexes, between 15 and 25 years of age, are becoming increasingly radicalized. They reject Western values. Even their parents are alarmed. <laughs> These parents often say, I see my son or even my daughter becoming so radicalized. I don't understand it. Freyhi says Muslim extremism is a phenomenon of youth and it is increasingly appealing to women. I spoke with several women, radical Muslimas, whose highest ideal is to marry a Muslim warrior. We call these women jihad brides. Here in the Molenbeek district of Brussels, more than a third of the residents are Muslims from North Africa. Hin spent two months living and researching here, undercover, posing as a sociology student in order to learn more about Islamist extremism. On market day, the streets are full of people. Many stop to chat. The mood seems friendly and pleasant, but it's obvious that the police presence has been increasing. The authorities are aware of a rising potential for violence in the area. Suddenly we're told we're unwelcome. This man tells us to stop filming, warning us in no uncertain terms that he'll get violent if we don't get out of here right away. The bystanders are also upset. We move on in an attempt to defuse the situation. But the man follows us, and a short while later we have another run-in with him. He tells us to take away the camera. He tells us we have no rights and can only film if he allows it. Belgian laws do not interest him. The man is confident that it is he who controls the neighborhood. Molenbeek's police station is located hardly 100 meters away. Many police officers are afraid that the state no longer wields authority here, at least not the sole authority. They know that Islamists view Molenbeek as subject only to Muslim law. Many of the older men despair and call these young people a lost generation. But no one wants to say it on camera. It's too dangerous to get into a fight with them. These men are arguing the rules of coexistence. Our camera is a provocation. Its mere presence seems to call into question who makes the rules here. With much effort, five police officers are able to calm everybody down. They know the situation in the area is very tense, but they're not supposed to say it out loud. Hinfra Yihi is trying to break this taboo. She wants to stop the growing influence of the radical Islamists. It's a problem which has gone beyond just a few cities. This is no longer just a phenomenon in cities. It's long since reached rural areas, and not just in Europe, but worldwide. It's getting worse all the time. More and more young people in small towns, even in farming villages, are being infected by these extremist ideas. Hind believes the Arabic language media play a major role. They can be received via satellite even in the smallest hamlets. In the propaganda they broadcast, religion is not a private matter. All of life is being Islamized, says Hind. For her, religion is a private matter and no substitute for politics. She thinks Muslim women should be able to wear headscarves in the mosque, but not on the street. 